Okay, remember on the uh, last little section we saw this result, that if x was normally distributed, then the sample mean x bar was also normally distributed with the parameters of mean uh, mu n variance sigma squared over n. Now this leads us on to the central limit theorem, which says that if x has a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared, and n is big enough, then we can still use this result. Now you might think, well, what's the difference? Uh, this means that it can be used even if x is not normally distributed, um, so long as uh, n is large enough. Now I'm just putting a little asterisk there um, for us to think about later on, we'll come back to this, but um, if you're starting with a distribution that is discrete and you're turning it into something that's normally distributed, we'll need to think about continuity corrections, but I'll come back to that later with an example. So this works as long as n is big enough, um, and specifically n has to be bigger than 30. Then we can use the central limit theorem to be able to work out that our uh, sample mean follows that normal distribution. So you're taking lots of samples repeatedly and uh, finding the mean of them, and if you do that enough times you will end up coming out with a normal distribution. You'll, you'd expect that mean to come close to... Um, what the actual population mean is, and then get a few that tend away from it above and a few tend below, and you'll end up with that normal distribution sort of pattern. Okay, so let's see how to use this. We've got a continuous random variable x, it has a mean of two thirds and a variance of one eighteenth. We've got a random sample of a hundred ob observations taken of this variable. Now this one is already starting as a continuous random variable, so we don't need to co worry about a continuity correction here. We're going from something that's continuous into the normal which is continuous. Alright, now we are working out the um, sample mean x bar, and we want to find the probability that that sample mean is less than 0 0.68. So we have 100 observations, that means we can use the central limit theorem because that's more than 30. So now our mean follows a normal distribution, uh, sorry, the sample mean follows a normal distribution with a mean of two-thirds, and the variance is 1 over 1,800, that's an eighteenth divided by n, the hundred. So the probability that our sample mean is less than 0 0.68 looks like this, so we're just using the normal distribution, and then we can work that through to find our probability. Okay, now the next one, we've got 40 students, um, each of them throws a fair dice 12 times and records the number of sixes that they throw. The teacher then calculates the mean of the six, number of sixes per student. We want to work out the probability that this mean was more than 2.2. So if we let x be the number of sixes thrown by a student, then x follows a binomial distribution with parameters 12 and a sixth. So from there we can work out the mean, just think back to your binomial distributions, and the variance for one student. So one student's 12 throws has, has a mean of 2 and a variance of 5 thirds. Now x bar is the um, mean of the 40 results, so the mean of our samples. Okay, so x bar then follows a normal distribution um, with a mean of 2 and a variance of 1 24th. So that variance comes from 5 thirds divided by 40. Now since we are going from a binomial into a normal distribution we're going to need to apply a continuity correction. Now with the central limit theorem we work this out as 1 over 2n. Okay, so here's that little asterisk I was talking about on the first slide that I'm coming back to now. Since we're going between discrete um, and we're turning it into a normal approximation, we need that continuity correction. Now, when your samples get really big, that 1 over 2n is really tiny and it makes no difference at all, but we do need to include it just um, to be thorough. Okay, now we're working out the probability that our mean is more than 2.2, so we need to, since we're going for more than, and not equal to, um, then we want to add on that 1 over 80 continuity correction. Remember, n is 40, and we're doing 1 over 2n to do the continuity correction. It looks like this. So we're finding that area there, and since we want to go to the right of that line, we need 2.2 to not be included, because we're not doing a greater than or equal to. We're just strictly greater than, so we need to add on that continuity correction. 
If we'd wanted to do equal to, we would have subtracted it to make sure that the 2.2 got included. Okay, so now moving on from there, finding our probability looks like this. And then carrying on that calculation, we get our final probability is 0 0.149. If you're a little bit vague about continuity corrections, it would be a good idea to go and look up um, the approximations we've done before um, with things like approximating a binomial with a normal distribution and go refresh your memory of that.